Hello and welcome to the show, uh, to the special offering REIT Connect, where we explain to you all the tenets and aspects of real estate investment trusts and how it can be part of your diversified investment portfolio. And let me welcome on the show Karan Bhagat. Uh, he is the MD and CEO of 361. Karan, always a pleasure to welcome you on CNBC TV 18. Now, my first question to you. REITs are a newer asset class. How do you see its potential and how do you feature this in a diversified portfolio? What are your thoughts on that? Thank you. Thank you, Nisha, for having me on CNBC TV 18. Um, I think REITs are a very interesting asset class and especially uh, from a portfolio allocation perspective, given the change in debt taxation in the last budget, REITs have become specially attractive. All fixed income mutual funds are now taxed at marginal tax rates. REITs, however, continue to have a preferred, slightly preferred tax because the tax is already paid in the special purpose vehicle before getting distributed to the clients. So if you compare it to the 10-year GSEC, today our REITs are giving us around about 5.8 to 5.9% 5 5 on a post-tax basis. Uh, so for a client, effectively, he's getting four things. One, he's getting 5.8, 5.9% on a post-tax basis. Second, he's able to allocate and take advantage of the capital appreciation on in commercial real estate over the next 10 to 15 years. Thirdly, he's able to uh, take advantage of the fact of increase in rental over the next 5, 10, 15 years. And lastly, he's also able to take benefit of the fact that these are multiple set of properties lulled into one. And as occupancy increases from the current yields of 80 to 83% to 100%, that benefit would also flow into the REIT. So overall, I think the 5.8 to 6% can move towards the 9 to 10%. So it's nowhere close to an equity alternative. Uh, for It definitely does not substitute equity in a client's portfolio, but it's a very, very interesting part of his fixed income portfolio, which can potentially end up giving 8 to 10% post-tax over the next three to five years. It's interesting you said, Karan, that it's uh, not as good as equity or uh, not at par with equity and more considered as a fixed product. Uh, but I would say that internationally, globally, where it's a much larger asset class, it is classified as an equity product, uh, barring the uh, dividend distribution, which is mandatory on the companies. But Karan, uh, if you really uh, compare this with investment in other property asset classes, like a real estate company's stock or else a property investment. How do you rate REIT vis-a-vis uh, -vis them? So uh, yeah, maybe Nisha, I'll correct myself a little bit. I, I, I don't think it can be compared to equity. So I think the risk reward is really very, very different uh, because a REIT by definition has a has a yield distribution of approximately on pre-tax seven quarter, seven half. Obviously, mm -hmm. when you buy a stock, you're subject to slightly much more volatility and you're seeking higher returns from a growth perspective. So from a REIT perspective, I wouldn't consider, I wouldn't compare it to stocks. Uh, but overall, I think uh, both have their place in the portfolio. I think most of our large high net worth clients today would have 50 to 60% of their portfolio in stocks and still would have around about 30 to 40% of the portfolio on the fixed income side. Within the yeah. fixed income side of 30 to 40%, I think REITs offers a serious alternative to be around 15, 20% of that 40%. So effectively for most clients today, uh, REITs would, would make up close to five to 10% of their portfolio. Uh, we only have uh, four listed REITs in the country, but as the yeah. sector becomes deeper and wider, I think this allocation yes. will move from 5% to, towards 10 odd percent. Right, so how do you see the potential going forward, Karan, for this particular asset class? You said it's only 5 to 10%, and obviously it is only in the commercial real estate segment. We haven't even touched on the residential side and other subsets of real estate, which are really growing in a meaningful way. So how do you see the potential going forward in this? And um, your company also has a license for REIT. What are your plans for that, given the potential outlook that you have? I think overall, uh, the potential for REITs as a broad asset class continues to be fairly large. I think yeah. globally, apart from apart from having uh, uh, REITs on the commercial side, even uh, housing, real estate, uh, residential housing REITs are very, very popular and extremely large. 
Apart from that, you've got co-living REITs, you've got hostel REITs, and so on and so forth. I think generally speaking in India, residential uh, real estate prices have always been uh, slightly on the higher side for the right set of reasons. And therefore, the yields on the residential uh, uh, apartments continue to be stead lower at 4 to 5% as compared to commercial at 7 to 8%. Uh, so I think once once kind of uh, there is a little bit of more stability in the rental yields on the residential side, you'll see some of them converting into uh, converting into REITs. Uh, I think it's not it's not a question of uh, uh, if it's a question of when. So eventually it will happen. Whether it happens over the next 12 to 18 months or the next 24 to 36 months is something which time will tell. But overall, I think uh, uh, REITs will grow across all of these spaces, whether it's senior living, hostel living, co-living, uh, commercial REITs, or uh, even residential REITs. Commercial REITs, obviously, the easiest to understand. And now we've got also a mall REIT, which is listed, which is Nexus. So I think across these six broad strategies, uh, you'll see enough, uh, enough, enough uh, increase in the depth and the width of the market over the next three to five years. On our own side, I think uh, we've got our own uh, REIT license, which uh, we have approximately 12 to 15 months to still uh, to still decide whether we launch our own REIT or not. So we're still firming up plans there, early days. Uh, but but over the next three to six months, we like the space. And uh, if we find ourselves having a sweet spot or a unique opportunity to develop our own REIT, we will definitely look at it. Right. And in terms of uh, the suggestions, how this can become a more attractive asset class, what would you say? Because on the tax side, it is attractive, but more can be done there. Even equity classification is what the industry is lobbying for. Any suggestions that you have? Well, I, think, I think overall tax has come out well. I, 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 I think the, the, both, both, the, both, the, uh, both the regulator, the ministry, as well as the tax department have done a good job. I think it's got a pass through. So the tax is rightfully paid in the special purpose vehicle and at the, uh, at the recipient's level, it is exempted from tax. So honestly, I think uh, from a tax perspective, a lot has been done. Obviously, more can be done, but a lot has been done. So I'm quite uh, comfortable there. I think uh, one pending, uh, pending demand was really the SEZ's uh, uh, regulation being modified, which too has kind of come in some format or the other over the last two and a half, three months. So I think the utilization of uh, the REITs uh, definitely will move up from the current 80 to 83 percent, closer to the 90, 95 percent, which which will also affect the which will also help the help the REITs. And um, I think finally, uh, you know, uh, maybe both classification as equity as and also more importantly, I think. Uh, the REITs trade in uh, larger lot sizes. If they can be traded in smaller lot sizes, especially the larger ones, I think it will allow a greater pool of people to access the uh, uh, access the REIT. All right, so great suggestions there, Karan. But a quick question before I let you go. Uh, what's your view on the market in the near term? Some of the big, big events happening in election season, interest rate cut, uh, expected geopolitics. How do you see all this really impacting our markets in the near term? So I think uh, we, we can't escape from the fact that the markets are slightly uh, uh, expensive on the valuation side. I think uh, if you look at price to book uh, historical multiples for the last uh, 10, 15, 20 years, we are closer to the, towards the 3.5 to 3.7 times as compared to the long-term average of closer to the 3 to 3.2 times. So we are definitely a standard standard one, one and a half standard deviation away from the, uh, the long-term averages. Having said that, I think uh, generally speaking, uh, if I look at the large cap and the large mid cap space, which broadly would include the top maybe 300 to 400 stocks, as well as some uh, mid-cap stocks which have large institutional ownership. I think these two categories um, uh, may correct a bit, but they definitely is, are not going to correct in a such a meaningful way that you have an opportunity to get out of equities and get in again. Uh, I think uh, the, I think broadly, FI investors across the world over the last 24 months have under-allocated to, uh, to, to India. And especially these two segments, if the market's correct, will uh, get a huge amount of investor appetite uh, from these set of investors. So for these set of stocks, I wouldn't really worry. I would I would stay invested. There will be a little bit of volatility, a little bit of shocks. Uh, which event will cause it? Uh, we really don't know. But I think I would I would kind of hang in there. Uh, on mm -hmm. the on the on the mid cap side and the small cap side, I think there are you know again it's very stock specific, but there are excesses there, and that's mm -hmm. where I would be a little a little bit uh, wary. And if there's a deep correction in the market, some of those stocks could potentially correct 15 to 40 percent. And therefore, you know we, we need to be very very careful on. Uh, which mid cap and uh, small mid cap and small cap stocks we own. But outside of that, uh, from a five year perspective, right. the markets continue to look constructive. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Karan Bhagat, for joining us right here on Read Connect. Thank you so much. Uh, and with that, it's time for a short breather on the show.